In 1898, William Osler was making the rounds at Johns Hopkins Hospital, and among his observers was a 29-year-old Canadian doctor. When Osler discovered that the doctor had just been placed in charge of the medical museum at his beloved McGill, the two became fast, lifelong friends. What was unusual about the encounter was that the doctor was a woman, in a time when the profession was just beginning to soften its views about women who aspired to practice medicine. Still, it wasn't an easy road for Maud Abbott. She had wanted to take medicine at McGill, but settled for the University of Bishop's College. Still, she was better off than James Barry, who died four years before her birth. Dr. Barry had risen to become Inspector General of the military hospitals in Canada, and eventually the head of the entire British Army Medical Service. Upon Barry's death, an autopsy revealed that the doctor's entire career was conducted by a woman disguised as a man. Abbott was greatly encouraged by Osler, but was aided by a single-minded drive to be involved with medicine on her own terms. She shunned a husband and was married to her career, where she would become a world authority on congenital heart disease. Sheer determination and great effort gave Dr. Abbott an extensive knowledge of pathological specimens, and her opinion was eagerly sought. In 1907, she founded and was the first president of the International Association of Medical Museums. But her hidden legacy consists of numerous women who followed Abbott into successful careers in medicine, free of the so-called burden of being a woman. <laughs>